What is up guys, it is Captain Glitch here with a new kind of tutorial for you today. This is going to be one of many ASM tutorials. Don't get too happy though, because I'm not going to rush these out, because I'm still learning it myself, even though I've been writing ASM for a couple years now. GBA ASM is still like over, just a little over a year. But this is probably the most basic and probably the most important one you should learn if you ever want to use one of my patches or BioSparks patches or any patches that are in the ASM format. Now this is going to be similar to any game that requires assembly patching but this is specifically for GBA games so it'll also work on like any Pokemon that has ASM patches and Mario Kart Super Circuit if there's even things for that. But this is specifically for this video we're going to be talking about Metroid because that's what I hack. So let's go ahead and get into it. First you're going to need ARM IPS. I'll provide the link to that in the description, but the patches that I and BioSpark write are written specifically with the syntax for that program. So basically, download the link I put in the description. I'll also put it on the video screen about now, but typing that is hard, so just click on the link in the description. You're also going to need whatever ASM patch you're applying, obviously. The last thing you're going to need is a ROM for the game the patch belongs to. So if it's for Pokemon uh, Sapphire, you're going to need a Pokemon Sapphire ROM. But again, you're going to be using Metroid. So you're going to be need a Zeom or Fusion ROM. It's always the American one just because that's the one Mage can edit. Uh, I will not put links to these. You're going to have to find these yourself because ROM distribution is illegal. Illegal. <laughs> or illegal. Whatever that word means. So once you have ARM IPS, you're going to want to put it wherever you, in whatever folder you want. And you're also going to want to put your ROM, your vanilla ROM, an unedited one, in the same directory. As you can see, I have a zero mission, a, f a fusion, and ARM IPS. They're all in the same directory. And whatever ASM patch you have, you're also going to want to put it here. This just makes everything simpler. Now there's two ways to apply with this setup. We can do the easiest way. And that's simply dragging and dropping onto ARM IPS. But that's not going to work unless you know what the ROM needs to be named. So here we opened Ridley Timer, which allows a timer to start once you kill Ridley. As you can see, there's these, these two lines are going to be at the beginning of most ASM files. This one is the one you really want to look at. This first one is where you want to look at even further. So... The things in these quotes are what the ROM needs to be named in order for the patch to be applied. So, obviously this is for zero mission, so you need the ROM to be named zm.gba in this case. As you can see, we have that. And when we apply it, it should output the ROM name, which was next to it. Sometimes it takes a little bit to load, but it is doing its thing. And where was it? I saw something appear. Ah, there it is. You got ridley.gba. As you can see, that is the output name. So you really want to look at that. For most of my patches, for ZM patches, it's just going to be ZM.GBA. For Fusion, it's going to be F MF or Fusion.GBA. Let me check. I have a Fusion patch somewhere. Yeah, Fusion.GBA. And BioSpark has a similar format. Uh, his ZM patches are ZM underscore U. And then his Fusion patches are MF underscore U, I believe. And the U stands for the US version. So that's the easiest way to apply it. That's honestly how most people should apply it. The only reason you would need to apply it the second way is if the there's no output file coming out and you don't know why. Or you edited the file and then no, it didn't output a file. So what you want to do is you want to shift, hold shift and right click in this folder. You can see open PowerShell uh, for some for you Windows users. Uh, that's either going to be PowerShell or Command Prompt, and for other users, you know, Command uh, whatever it's called for you guys. I'm not affiliated with those things. But then you're going to want to type. For me, I have to type the the dot and backslash because um, PowerShell doesn't recognize the command, and this shows that I trust the command. But for most of you, you won't need that part. Then you would type arm 
IPS, the name of the, the program, then you want to type the name of your ASM file. So we can use, let's use, let's use gravity heat. Gravity heat dot ASM. You just click enter. If nothing appears, that means it worked. And as you can see, we have it outputted. Now I'll show you why this is important. So let's screw something up here. Let's mess that up. And now if we apply the same thing, see we get some invalid line 13 undefined label check effect. And that's just because I screwed up the label. But that's really useful once you start learning ASM and you want to know why it's not compiling. That's also useful if you download one and it's not compiling, then that's either a bug or you had the ROM named incorrectly. But that is basically it. That is all it takes to apply an ASM patch. The first way, like I said, is going to be the really the only way you need to do it unless uh, you're editing one or you're doing other things. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope this helps out. You, all, you guys can use my patches and Biosparks patches as well without having to rely on uh, AS, uh, it being IPS format. And I'll see you guys next time whenever we get to the more advanced stuff.